In the previous video on tuning systems, we saw that the first formal tuning system created was Pythagorean tuning, which uses intervals of perfect fifths to tune notes. The perfect fifth is harmonically the second strongest interval after the octave. So using perfect fifths as the basis of your tuning system gives you notes that are harmonically related to each other. Indeed, using Pythagorean tuning allows us to very easily create the major pentatonic scale. For this reason, the major pentatonic scale was discovered independently by every ancient civilization around the world. And as you would expect, the major pentatonic scale is a very consonant, pleasant, and harmonically strong scale, precisely because all the notes are related harmonically. So let's discover the major pentatonic scale ourselves. First, let's quickly revise the frequency ratios of the two most important consonant intervals. The perfect octave has a ratio of 2 to 1, and the perfect fifth has a ratio of 3 to 2. Now, it's very easy to find these harmonics on a guitar. The second harmonic is located above the 12th fret and creates an octave interval with the open string. And the third harmonic is located above the 7th fret and creates a perfect 5th interval with the open string. Now, for simplicity, let's start on a hypothetical note C that has a frequency of 100 Hz. We perform the following steps. Tune the first string to the note C. Play the third harmonic of the C string to find the note G and tune the next string to that note G. Then play the third harmonic of the G string to find the note D to tune your next string. Then play the third harmonic of the D string to find the note A to tune your next string. Play the third harmonic of the A string to find the note E, which you use to tune the next string. And finally, play the second harmonic of the original C string to find the note C an octave higher and tune your final string to the note C an octave higher. So now if we rearrange these notes, we can create the C major pentatonic scale, C, D, E, G, A, C. So now let's find these frequencies mathematically. Now to find the note a perfect fifth above, you multiply by three on two, and to find the note an octave above, you multiply by two on one. To find the note a perfect fifth below, you divide by three on two, and to find the note an octave below, you divide by two on one. Now we'll need to reduce some frequencies by an octave in order to bring them down to within the same octave range, which for us is between 100 and 200 hertz. Now here are the frequencies of each note. Now let's write these notes in order from lowest to highest. Next, let's compare the interval ratios between each successive note to see how big the gaps are between each note. Now, if we look at this major pentatonic scale and compare the intervals between successive notes, we find that we have two different sized intervals here. A smaller interval with a ratio of 9 over 8 and a larger ratio of 32 over 27. And notice that we have those two large gaps between the notes E and G and A and C. Now these are quite large leaps and make the scale sound a little disjointed. Wouldn't it be great if we could somehow fill in those gaps to make the interval between these notes a little bit smaller? Now to do this, we use our standard technique. We take the E string and find the note a perfect fifth higher by playing the third harmonic, which is the note B. Now the next step is a little bit harder. Here we take the C string and we find the note a perfect fifth lower to get the note F. So we need to tune the new string such that its third harmonic is C. Now this is shown mathematically here. So now let's write these notes out in order again and show the intervals between successive notes. So as you can see, we still have two intervals. 
a smaller one of 256 over 243, which we can call a semitone, and a larger one of 9 over 8, which we can call a tone. And so we have now derived the major scale. We started with the major pentatonic scale, which is very consonant and pleasant sounding, and then added two more notes in to fill the large gaps created by that scale. We now have the familiar tone-tone-semitone, tone-tone-tone, semitone pattern of the major scale. And this is why the major scale has seven notes. Firstly, because it's very easy to tune using Pythagorean tuning, and that was the first formal tuning system used. Second, because it created a consonant set of notes that sound pleasant and are related to each other harmonically. Thirdly, because the notes are evenly spaced apart. This is important. Successive notes were separated by either a smaller interval, the semitone, or a larger interval, the tone which makes the scale sound smooth and connected and linear. If we had a scale where each set of adjacent notes had a different sized interval, it would sound very lopsided and chaotic. And finally, there's actually also a psychological reason why we landed on the major scale having seven notes. Research done in the 1950s found that the number of objects an average person can hold in his or her short-term memory is about seven. This is known as Miller's Law, or the magic number seven plus or minus two. So it's probably not a coincidence that the main scale in Western music has seven notes. That's the number of things we can easily remember in our short-term memory. A scale consisting of 27 notes, for example, might be a little bit harder to remember and use. So to conclude, for those of you who watched the previous video on tuning systems, you'll know that Pythagorean tuning is not consistent. When we went all the way around the circle of fifths, we didn't end back up where we started. We didn't finish on the original note an octave higher. So if our original note was 100 hertz, an octave above that should be 200 hertz. But we found that when we go all the way around the circle of fifths, we actually finished on 202.7 hertz, which is slightly more than an octave. So mathematically, this is expressed like this. And in English, all this means is that 12 fifths do not equal seven octaves. And as we saw, the difference between the two octave frequencies, the one that we have and the one that we should have, is called the Pythagorean comma, and it's 531.441 over 524.288. Well, we can see the same problem arise in the major scale when we use Pythagorean tuning. Ideally, we would expect that all intervals within this scale are consistent, that all the same intervals in this scale have the same frequency ratio, and that inverse intervals have inverse frequency ratios. For example, the ratio between the notes D and A is 3 to 2, which is a perfect fifth. And the inverse interval between A and D an octave higher is 4 to 3, which is a perfect fourth. So this is consistent. That makes sense. This is exactly what we would expect and hope. But now let's try the same thing for the notes F and B. This is shown here. So notice that the interval ratio from F to B, a tritone interval, is different to the interval ratio from B to F, an octave higher, which is, again, also a tritone interval. So they're both the same interval. These are both tritone intervals, but they have two different values. They have two different distances separating the notes. So we've ended up with two different tritone intervals. And so we found an inconsistency. And as you may have guessed, the difference between these two frequency ratios of these two different tritone intervals is the Pythagorean comma. And here it is again.